<laughs> okay, sorry about that. I got excited. Um, welcome to a new recipe section in jamieoliver.com. This is the Valentine's recipe section. This is meals for two. This is meals to make you fall in love. Lover's food. Uh, food that is light and fragrant, diverse in many different ways, not too heavy so you can be a little bit more flexible. Uh, this is proper meal, interactive food, where you can pass things around and you know just share and you know whole roasted fish and beautiful, beautiful fragrant dishes. So I put a whole bundle of my favourite meals for two together and as you know I am Mr Romance. So you can trust me, come with me and come and join the new Valentine section. You're going to love it, you're going to love it. Honestly. We're going to make the most incredible, beautiful chocolate pots. This would be brilliant for a romantic interlude, yes. Or frankly, anyone with loads of friends or kids, but they're also vegan friendly. The mystery ingredient, tofu. Yes, 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 I know, shh, 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 shh. Tofu. No, no, stop. Listen. No, stop. Stop. Listen, okay, this is a vegan chocolate dish. And this is fantastic because actually we got the benefits of having less saturated fat, so it's healthier, but you can really, really taste the quality of the chocolate. So this is how we roll, guys. We're starting off with really good quality dark chocolate, 85% cocoa solids, two packs of these, 200 grams. Give it a slap. And let's open up our chocolate and just let that sprinkle in, bowl over some water. Now, this will slowly melt into the bowl. Just give it a little stir every 30 seconds or something like that, but don't rush it. Then, the tofu. This is the point where cream would normally go into some kind of chocolate mousse or some sort of chocolate pot. Just put it into a clean tea towel. It has to be clean. So there's one pack and two packs. So there's 700 grams of tofu in that clean tea towel. Grab up the corners and bring it together and twist it and get rid of the residual excess moisture. Go into a food processor, throw in all of the tofu, just like that. Just the zest of one lime. Try and use one of these microplanes or fine graters. Don't use the coarse ones. It's got to be just the green skin here. Give it a whack. So go in with one tablespoon of beautiful dark rum. Then I'm gonna go in with two teaspoons of vanilla bean paste. You can use extract, but this paste, I just love the flavor. It's really, really good. A little pinch of salt. Back over here, we've got our chocolate looking good. There's a few little bits in there, so we'll come back to that in a second. Now, 160 grams of maple syrup, which is basically all of this. And then another little secret ingredient, chili. It's a bit fashionable, I know. I don't want to add much to it, like a good pinch. So I'm just going to add that chilli into there. Uh, I'm going to take my chocolate off the heat now. You can see this is completely melted. Look at that, beautiful. So let this cool down. I'm going to whiz this up for about two minutes to get super silky smooth, then I'll start adding the chocolate. OK, now it's super smooth. Now we can start adding the chocolate. OK, so let's have a little look in here. I mean, look at that. I mean, it is chocolate heaven. You know, it's totally convincing. I know you weren't convinced by the tofu at the beginning, but let me just go over the logic just one last time. Look, I'm all into cream. It's delicious, it's rich. You can put air bubbles into it. But if it's the really good chocolate, which we want to celebrate, you know, having it simpler and cleaner, you can really taste it. Let's have a little taste. Oh, really, really good. So it's time to think about serving it. Over here, I've got some glasses, little espresso cups are super cute. This is enough for about eight little chocolate pots. So I'm just gonna edge it out. And this is a chocolate pot, so we don't want loads. If you wanna put it into something and shake it flat, you can. But I quite like seeing the ripples, because you see just how silky it is then. Three of my favorite things on the planet, maple syrup, dark rum, and chocolate. We can have real fun with this. You could take a little um, cantucci biscuit, you know, with little pistachios in it and smash it up. Beautiful. You could take an amaretti biscuit and smash that up. Take your favourite hobnob or biscuit or whatever gets you going and bash that up. Even some nice nuts. So anything that's going to complement uh, the lovely chocolate experience. So I'm just going to take some nice little ginger nuts, just bash these up to a nice fine powder. Something crunchy is going to be amazing. Uh, and just put a spoon 
like this. You could just shave a bit of extra chocolate on the top. You can also just get an everyday grater and do exactly the same. Pistachios. So I would take these nuts now and just put them on top of one. So there you go, guys. Beautiful vegan chocolate pots. Okay, it's a very, very important day in the annual calendar. Yes, we're very close to Valentine's Day. And I've had a little shout out from a fellow YouTuber, Jim Chapman, over there. Hello. Yes. How are you? I'm engaged to a beautiful lady. Tanya, she's also on YouTube. She does makeup tutorials and also sort of fun, cute videos. And she's just delightful to behold. This will be our eighth Valentine's Day and I need something to impress her that might get me lucky later. Okay, so we've got a beautiful meal. We're gonna do marinated seared tuna with a nice spaghetti with a simple tomato sauce. Perfect for Valentine's Day. Let's do it. So grab your pestle and mortar. Uh, I want a nice pinch of salt, Jim. Okay. All right, that's for seasoning and to give a nice bit of abrasion. I like it, good word. What is it? Impre abrasion. Yes, very nice. We're gonna grab a wad of basil and we're gonna make a basil oil. I think actually when she sees me doing this anyway, I won't need, need to cook anymore. She'll just come in and go, wow. That's, and that's, that's it. my boy. Job done. So olive oil, a couple of good tablespoons to half the zest of a lemon goes in. Just about three or four strokes. Just the juice of half a lemon is probably more than enough. So I only want you to put half on this tuna. Okay. And then I keep this for sort of drizzling on the end uh, because it's fresh and alive. Sustainable fish. We do not want to be using big eye or bluefin tuna. So yellowfin or skipjacks are really, really good to use. We are going to do something very special. Jim, I want you to hold that pack and smash it like a man on that board. This is where it's all going to go wrong, isn't it? Dominant. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It Whoa. Could, yeah. Next, 200 grams of tomatoes. We're just going to cut them into half. Once upon a time, I cooked naked for my wife. I was like you, I was young, vulnerable, and looking for love, <laughs> and not married yet. And I actually cooked a whole sea bass in my new oven. As I opened the door to check my sea bass, a jet of hot steam <laughs> shot into my penis. My whole night was ruined. So that's a warning. Or wear clothes when you cook. Or just wear a penny. Yeah. So we've halved our tomatoes, mm -hmm. good job. We want some garlic, just a couple of cloves of garlic each. Tell us all about your channel. So essentially what I do every week on a Friday, I upload a video where I embarrass myself in some way. So people basically tune in to see you squirming at your own sort of self. Yeah, uh, self-loathing, self-pity, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Okay, it's time to cook the tuna. A lot of people think the tuna has to be cooked all the way through. No, I don't like it like that. No. A bit tough. A little bit, yeah, a little bit pink is good. Let's make a two minute tomato sauce. I want to go in with a whole pinches of fennel seeds. Go in with some olive oil, garlic, grab a chilli. So I reckon about half a chilli is going to be good for you and your missus. Okay. And then go in with your tomatoes as well. Now, if we look in the pan now, so I'm just going to turn this tuna over. Oh yeah. Beautiful. So tuna on, sauce on, pastas on. So a nice pinch of salt, nice pinch of pepper. If you look in this pan, see how we're just softening up those cherry tomatoes. We've had about a minute and a half on each of these tuna. Uh -huh. So here's your one. Thank you very much. And like a piece of meat, we're going to let that rest. And now, Jim, if you can get a little bit of that lovely fresh basil oil, divide up our pasta. Just grab some basil and just tear a little bit or chop a little bit through. You don't need much. Right at the last minute. Okay. So we're going to just drag that onto a plate. But I think it's quite nice to have this as a share plate. Yeah, then you, there's more chance of you getting that sort of it's, lady in the tramp moment, isn't there? Yes. Sharing. And are you going to make this for on Valentine's Day? Yeah, yeah, that's the reason I'm here. Okay, so over here, we're just going to tear that open and you see how that's blushing in the middle. That's what we want. And we can just tear that up and it gives you more surface area to have that lovely marinade. So Jim, look, you've done a great job, mate. I'm very proud of myself. You're good. I've entered manhood. So how are we going to test this? I don't know, you know. Hmm. You are the best. No, you are the best. I've made this meal for you because I love you. Because I love you. And you are going to get to try every single bit of it. <laughs> Why do you look nervous? I'm petrified. We're right just now. doing role play here, all right? I'm scared. Behind your eyes, it looks like it's really, it looks like you're curious. 
Up you go. Up. With cross. Oh yeah, work that thing. Nailed it. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Pasta's very good too. I'm impressed at myself. A really nice plate of food. Well cooked, my friend. Thank you very much. Today is a beautiful day because we're going to cook something incredible. We're going to do beautiful, light and crispy ricotta and parmesan fritters with wonderful wild mushrooms. It's a classic recipe, it's really quick to make and it's really nice to make for someone special. And I've got someone special here. Yes, we've got Michelle Faure. Woo! Thank you for That's coming. Sam, Jamie. On Food Tube. Yes. So, this is nice. I'm tell excited. Tell these people what you do best. I create videos. I do a lot of beauty tutorials, fashion hair, a little bit of everything, you know, you, just like your channel. You've been doing YouTube <laughs> like for years and years. I've been doing it for seven years and so I'm like a, a mother goose on, on YouTube. So I'm really, really honoured to have you here today. Uh, same here. Thank you for coming same to our world and the best thing about my channel is you get to eat. I know. So um, first up, my darling, we're going to let the sort of shapes speak for themselves. Yes. But it's quite nice just to use your hands and tear things. I quite like tearing things instead you of do. like... You um, do. And then with the more sort of traditional ones, and I'm not joking, you can just squash them. Squash what? them like that. Just squash them? Yeah, because I think squash things and rip things and torn things. This She's is so violent. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some thyme. And if you just put them into the corner of the board here, I'm going to take maybe three cloves of garlic and I'll slice it for you. So a little Ooh, fresh chilli, chili. a knob of butter, a little bit of <laughs> olive oil, and I'm going to now hand over to the lovely Michelle. We're going to go into medium high heat. So in with the olive oil. Okay. Now what you can do is add your knob of butter. Butter. And then straight in with the garlic. You shake the pan very quickly now, Tiger. We're going to shake it up, shake it up, and now get your mushrooms. In with the mushrooms, quick, All quick, of them? quick. Yep. Oh All my of them. gosh. We can also go in with the chilli, my darling. Do it quickly. And then you can go in with your thyme. Lovely. Pinch of salt and pepper just to get it going is lovely. And then what I want to do is just stop that frying for a minute. Ah, oh, water right. it down. With just a little water. Mm. That's going to create steam that will really sort of bring the natural flavours out of all the mushrooms so that they all combine. Chop a little parsley uh, and that's good to go. And I'm going to show you how to make this fritter. Here we have 400 grams of ricotta. I'm going to put one egg in, lovely free range egg. A tablespoon of just plain flour. Okay. Goes in, like that. And then nutmeg, a quarter of a nutmeg. Really fresh. If you can stir that for me, darling. Sure. And then I'm going to season it with a little salt and a little pepper. And this is a good one, Michelle. The zest of lemon is oh, just yes. fantastic. Half, half of the zest of a lemon, just like that. Parmigiano. So, Parmigiano. about 40 <laughs> grams. We're going to go in with a little olive oil. Spoon like this. So I'm just going to take three like that. You can rub it up the side if you want to. It takes about two and a half minutes each side. Okay, so we've got mushrooms, we've got the fritters. Have a little look at that. We've turned them, and I'm just going to turn them again. Look how lovely they are. So I'm going to turn the heat off now, mm. and I'm going to put in your parsley, and the little tip. I love the green. A little lemon juice. Lemon juice? About, yeah, so about, we're going to cut it? Yeah, five little drips of lemon juice. Give that a little shake if you can. Okay, a little shaky, shaky. I'm going to put half of that into a plate. Crispy and sizzling on the outside and then soft and really light in the middle. So I'm just going to give you two. Beautiful. There you go. Uh, let me do one for me too. Yeah, you have to eat with me. Have a little try on that, sweet. Bon appétit. I hope you like it. I can't wait to try this. Mmm. Michelle, how was that for you? This recipe needs to be online right now because I need to make this like as if it was yesterday. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> the recipe is in the link below. Go to jamielover.com, we'll have it there as per usual. I'm Katie Pick and today, love is in the air. Because ah, we are cooking a beautiful mussel pasta e fagioli. Mussels, very affordable, very good for you and very sustainable as well, very important. Uh, and on top of that, actually more recently, mussels have been found to have a compound that encourages 
sexual hormones such as estrogen and testosterone. So, I don't know, you might get more than just a really good dinner. Anyway, this recipe I'm making serves six people, but if you're cooking for company tonight and not a crowd, then divide all the quantities by three. To help you out, I've put these conversions in the description box below. So we're gonna start things off with six rashers of streaked smoky bacon. Now we're just gonna dice that down into some nice little wedges of bacon. Lardons, wedges. Use your technical terminology there, Kate. And this is gonna go into the pan first with about a, well, a nice generous drizzle of olive oil. We're gonna whack that onto a medium heat. And then we're gonna leave that to go nice and golden in the pan. Meanwhile, we're gonna prepare our veggies. One large onion, nice and thinly diced. Three cloves of garlic, half a bunch of parsley. And we are going to just take the stalks off of this. Whoop. And save the lush leaves bit for the end, just because otherwise they cook a bit too quickly in the pan. Just twist them up into a bundle and then slice through. Okay, your bacon should be starting to go nicely golden by now. Before it gets too crispy, we're gonna add in our veggies. And into that as well, we're gonna take a nice big pinch of chili flakes. This is optional, uh, but it's not gonna be the overriding flavor of the dish, don't worry. You're gonna be nervous enough if you're on a first date. You don't need to be sweating from chili heat as well. Okay, get that well combined. Oh, I almost forgot my carrots. Can't be forgetting those. See in the dark and all that. Um, so you need three carrots and we're literally going to peel them and dice them into nice little chunks just so that they cook at a similar rate to your onions as well. And those are gonna go in your pan as well. And then you're gonna leave this, stirring it occasionally, but on quite a kind of medium to low heat, just until your carrots soften, which should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Get those in there as well. Beautiful, look at the colors. Okay, so once that has been on the heat for about 10, 15 minutes, your carrots will be nice and softened. And then we're gonna add in our liquid. So starting off with 400 grams of chopped tomatoes. Now, I'd say this is an average tin, so that's going to go in there. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, lovely. Okay, and then we need one tin of cannellini beans with their liquid and all. So that's going to go in as well. It's 400 grams. And then finally, my secret kettle. <laughs> Um, you are going to put in 1.2 litres of boiling water straight from the kettle. We're going to whack this up all the way to a high heat, give it a good mix around, and then once it's boiled, we're going to drop it down to a simmer for 20 minutes. So it's been 20 minutes and the sauce has massively reduced just through simmering. So now I'm going to taste it. For some seasoning. Oh! Oh, that chilli heat is coming through, but it's really sweet. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, so I'm going to season it up with a generous pinch of salt, some pepper, and we're also going to take a slice of lemon and squeeze that in as well. Okay, so into that now, we're going to put in 300 grams of pasta. Now the brilliant thing about this recipe, as I say, mussels, seen posh, they're totally not. Pasta, grab any that are left over in your store cupboard, whether it's, you know, conch, conchaletti? Basically, what I call them are twists, bows, and penne. Get those in there, 300 grams, and then that's gonna sit in there for seven minutes, or until the pasta starts to cook and soften with the excess liquid. Okay, so that's now had about seven minutes. So our pasta is pretty much there. It's al dente, which is how I like it. Uh, if you need to, don't forget to add a bit more moisture just to make sure that it doesn't go too dry and starts to catch. Now it is time for the stars 
of the show, the heroes, the muscles. Now, as I say, these are absolutely beautiful. Look at them. They're really sustainable. The farms that they're actually farmed on, because they're filter feeders, they keep cleaning their own water so there's no environmental damage. This is where speed is your friend. So that's going to go straight on top of our pasta. And then we are going to cover. Now, if you have a lid, use the lid. I do not, so I'm just going to cover these with foil. They're going to steam them for five minutes or until the mussels have all opened. If they haven't opened, avoid them because they're probably not that good for you. <gasps> Beautiful! Oh, it looks so good. And actually to that, I'm also going to tear in the leaves of our, of our parsley from earlier. Let's just roughly tear that. And as I say, what they've also done there is released all of their juices to make it even more saucy and delicious. Look at that, all the colours. We've got loads there, but really, this couldn't be more perfect for a romantic meal for two. Just sit them down, candlelight, music in the background, a bit of buble. Yeah, and we're gonna just drizzle on a little bit of extra virgin olive oil there. And there it is, mussel pasta e fagioli. A beautiful dish for you to share with your loved one. Wow them with your flavour. And there's only one way to find that out. I've got to give it a go. Oh, it's so good. Oh, and got to try mussel as well. And top tip for you, when you're eating mussels, get yourself an empty shell, prise open your other mussel and use it as a pincer. Just to pluck it out. Mm, no mess, no fuss. Last year, I went on a cook's tour of Canada. Travelling from east to west, I got to sample some of the best food this country has to offer. But there's one dish from one restaurant that I can't get out of my mind. So I'm back in Montreal, a hotbed of culture and culinary art, to sample that dish and learn more about it. I'm going to Maison Publique to eat that oyster that's made me travel halfway around the world. Right, Derek, you're going to show me this oyster or what? Yeah, which one? <laughs> uh, the famous Marmite oyster. Yeah, absolutely. What was the inspiration behind this uh, crazy dish? When I lived in, in London, I had one roommate who would eat Marmite on toast, but he'd, he'd toast the bread, butter, Marmite, and then slice cucumbers. And that was a new one for me. And then when I was a kid, uh, I used to go down with my dad to the beach and we used to pull oysters off uh, the beach. And, like, West Coast oysters taste like cucumbers. I was like, oh, but they taste like cucumbers. Maybe we can incorporate some Marmite into it to make it a bit of an umami tsunami sort of thing, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then it was born. Okay, let's make one. Yeah, okay. These are beach angel oysters from Quadra Island in British Columbia. Not too far from Tofino. Very far from Tofino. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very far from Tofino. So we just lightly steam them, just so the oyster, the meat is just set. So you just pop these guys open. And when we make the uh, the mayonnaise, we we do use some of the liquid that comes out of it. And so, how did you meet Jamie? When I moved to London, I was young and dumb. He had just opened in 15, and uh, I went to go eat. And then somebody came over and asked if I was because uh, I was interested in the stuff. And I was asking okay, questions. Okay, you're asking lots of questions. Yeah, and they said, "Are you a cook?" I said, "Yeah, I'm a cook from from Canada." And I said, oh, we're looking for, for cooks. He goes, well, when can you come in and do a trial? Well, as soon as I finish my uh, ravioli, I'll come in and do it now. Right, let's crack on. All right. To complete the dish, it's just regular button mushrooms, which I really love button mushrooms. It's, some people don't think they're fancy enough. I think they're delicious. And just cooked way, way down. Okay. Nothing, no garlic, no shallots, no anything. Just dry in the pan, let the salt, let the water come out, cook them down a little bit of time, and then that's Amazing. it. And they start to caramelize a little bit. So there's just a few mushrooms in the bottom. Just raw onions. These don't really cook in the end anyway. Okay. They just sort of warm through, but they add that little... Bit of crunch and a bit of... Yeah, like the sort of nya onion yeah. flavor. We just slice them up into three. It's so cool for me to see what, what went into it because... It's really it simple. Just, yeah. It's like when you know nothing about it and you eat it for the first time, it really is like, what the hell is going on in here? It's amazing. I don't really have a signature dish. I guess this is it, but I'm known for a, like a, a baked oyster. That's, that's all I'm known for. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So why Montreal? I've never been here before. Growing up on the West Coast, I sort of knew what was going on there. I wanted to see something new and then bought a one-way ticket to Montreal and then never left. It was probably one of the oldest cities in, in the country, you know? So everything basically came 
through here. Yeah. So it's widely multicultural. I mean, we have yeah. a lot of inspiration to, and influences to draw from. Yeah. French, Portuguese, Italian, Russian, Lebanese. And that's why we're kind of blessed in Canada. We have a culinary identity, but it's very multicultural. Yes, it's a great place to come here and experience Canada through the food, for sure. I agree. So this is the marmot mayonnaise. So we make it like a, basically a mayonnaise with lots and lots of egg yolks. It just gets nice and glazy without okay. splitting. Let's make it like a regular mayonnaise, except for we put a little bit of, of mustard, uh, but English mustard, because okay. you can put and everything. Uh, and then the then Marmite. And so if you make a very thick mayonnaise, you just let it out with a little bit of water. Okay. We let it out with a little bit of the oyster juice, a pinch of cayenne, lemon juice. Holy hell. That's like 500 mils of mayo, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a lot. So now we bake? Now we bake, all right. So 375, 400, into the oven for about uh, 12 minutes. You want the mayonnaise to start bubbling okay. around the edges, just like a lasagna, you know, you okay. know it's ready when it starts to bubble and crisp around the edges. Oh, wow. Here we go. Holy cow. So those are done. just put a bit of wet, wet salt. Uh huh. So they stand up right. You should get one because you're so handsome. You're gonna get two. Terry. And they're gonna. They're gonna. I sit. just knew we would get on. Jesus, just look at that. So good. It is so good. You let these guys eat it now? No. Are <laughs> oh, you gonna nail the whole shebang, huh? No manners at this stage. Good food makes you lose your manners bringing all the memories back of like a year ago, coming here yeah. and just being like, having a revelation. You don't have those many revelations anymore. Do you know what I mean? As you get I older and- you get a surprise, yeah, every once in a while, yeah, that's Exactly, it. and then you get something that's a revelation and it, and it really reminds you why food's so important and why you got into food in the first place. And it, do you know what I mean? It makes you fall in love with it all over again. That is the best oyster in the world. Thanks, Chef. Totally amazing. Right, really good. Beautiful people, we are going to make a classic Negroni, an amazing cocktail that I love, the king of aperitivo. This was invented in Florence, and the last name of the guy that invented it was Negroni. So, first up, we've got gin, right next door to our modifier, which is a sweet vermouth, and then our beautiful bitters. This is good for stimulating the stomach, settling the stomach. It's also good at the end of the meal to settle a stomach when you've eaten nice things. So, we're going to go 25 milliliters of gin, and you've got here, if you see through the bottle, we've got things like the juniper berries. That has to be in a gym, the main ingredient, of course. We've got lemon peel, coriander, angelica, all these things grow in my garden, it's great. Oris, no idea what that is, but I'm sure it's lovely. Then 25 millilitres of the sweet vermouth. So, real, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm not all of that, just half of that. Sorry, I got overexcited. It's only, it's only natural. 25 the bitters. Bitter flavours is very much a part of very historical old cooking, both in Britain but absolutely in Italy. You know, all of these kind of botanical vegetables and stuff, they're bitter. And bitters is a very old-fashioned part of your palate. So, three equal parts of those great spirits go in. Now, we need to have some dilution of this cocktail. It's very strong at the moment. So, we're just simply going to put in a few ice cubes, use a spoon, uh, and just move it around. So we're just kind of watering down that cocktail just a little bit, and you know what, that's probably enough. So all we have to do now is a little smile of orange. So a nice, fresh orange, and a little tip. Remember, we've got bitterness in the white. Well, actually, we don't want that. But here in the skin is the oils, the essential oils, the beautiful flavor. So I'm gonna hold it up, and I'm just gonna squeeze it, and as I bruise that skin, Right, the juice will come out and it will go through the oil and that's all. Just a little smile, a little squeeze, nothing more, nothing less. We have another little stir and I'm just gonna top it up with a few nice ice cubes. That's the job done, happy as Larry. There we have a beautiful classic cocktail. All I've got to do now is have a little sip. Spectacular. 
But of course, life is too short just to have this great classic cocktail. So, if I took the gin out, right, and swapped it for vodka, that would be called Negroski. So, of course, look, there's beautiful things you can do. Top it up with Prosecco or some soda water. You can lighten it even, even beautiful with food. So, guys, cheers. Until next time, happy stirring. Bye. Welcome back to the Cock Insider Food Revolution Day with myself, DJ Barbecue, and I am joined by some very, very special guests, Jamie Oliver and Russell oh, Brand. Look at it in the street. I even We've know got that. Russell Brand here. Yeah. Oh. That's a coup, dude. I know. I know. I think DJ Barbecue's getting a little bit jealous now because he thought like his, you know, skateboarding and his haircut and his all-in-one that was pulling all the birds, but now he's got to share it with you. Yeah. So. He has got to share it, although I have seen the silhouette of DJ Barbecue's genitals and. They look marvellous. <laughs> I myself, I'd like some of that barbecue sauce. Yes, please. <laughs> I think I just took the first tentative steps on a path to homosexuality, Jamie. Oh, I, we need more love in this world, dude. And I'm right behind you, right there. Best You're all place mad. for you. Stop it, you savages. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, well first up, um, this wasn't intentional, but are you a vegetarian? Yes. So when did this start? When I was 14, because of the Smiths and learning about industrialised farming, I f like I thought, oh, I can't eat meat anymore. It seems unkind. Ah, oh, an animal. Right. And how's it been? I miss meat, but <laughs> since I've met what? DJ Barbecue, he's supplying. <laughs> yes. But yes. I, do, yeah, I do miss it. And also, sometimes you go to restaurants, there's not exciting enough things to have. I sometimes worry about the nutritional aspects of vegetarianism. Yeah. Am I getting enough protein? Again, DJ, you can help me. <laughs> but like, I just, I just want to make sure that I'm being catered for correctly as a vegetarian. And well, I need taste. OK, so we at uh, 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 the Food Revolution Day are going to try and cater for you. We have DJ Barbecue. He can deliver a lot. I can fill in any gaps. And then I think there's a few people out there that would like to help you with protein as well. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's eat some ovaries. Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I panicked. No, no. no. <laughs> I don't know where I'd get protein from no, a woman, actually, Jamie. Well, no, no, well, After birth. I mean, what? <laughs> That's good eating, dude. <laughs> okay. Well, while we're on the subject of ovaries and, and therefore uh, reproduction and babies, how, here's a little thing for you. The placenta. Yes, sir. The placenta in nature is eaten by all animals, tigers, giraffes, whatever. It, it's obviously the thing that nutrifies the baby, yeah. but no one's had to die to give it to you. So, like, would you eat placenta if Jamie Oliver, the Naked Chef, maybe turned it into a beautiful little kind of placenta parfait? Are you just improvising this? Because I actually would do that. Yeah, I would, would eat you? a placenta if you cook it, but not if it's off some dinner lady off of one of your courses. <laughs> Here you go, darling, I've got some placenta now. That's off my youngest. She's 15 herself. She's already kicked out. Of spot. I'm not eating that sort of afterbirth. Okay, so if you make it your proper Naked Chef style with all bits in it, like looking all nice, then Okay, I've got to do some chopping. <laughs> no problem, um, let's go. Okay. Do, are you any good with a knife? Not in these circumstances. Okay, let me show you. Can everyone in the street please give Russell Brand some help, please? Give him a bit of support. I'm scared, Jamie. Come on. <laughs> oh, nice. Jamie, I felt that's very nice. nervous while I was doing that. that. That's okay, it's vulnerability. It's, this is what quality TV is all yeah. about. Sauce. Now, I know tomato sauce is basic. I know a lot of us have it, but I want to show you how to make a really, truly wonderful one, okay? We're going to go in with Russell's garlic. Can I hear it from the street? Give us some support. Good oh, garlic, nice. actually. The garlic has gone in. Uh, we're going to go in with some um, chilli. We want a little bit of spice in there. So, this is booby pasta, everyone. What is it? Booby pasta! Right, booby pasta. <laughs> um, we're going to do a few boobies. We're going to do a few of those. And what we're going to do is cut them in half. Then we're going to go in with our boobies. So if you grab some boobies. Yes, sir. You grab some boobies. I get to grab some Everyone go in with their boobies. So we want to skin side up. Don't, no, that, no, that's it. Skin side up. Just He's like trying that. to hold the camera too, like Yes. Lid on. Yes. This pan is like the planet. So at the bottom of the planet is like the, the garlic and the chilli just like a planet, and then it's cooking the tomatoes. <laughs> He's really but then interesting. The moisture's dude. coming out of the tomatoes, but then it's going up to the top. Can you see the it's moisture? It's condensing there. That's, that's the ozone layer. Yes, that's like the ozone layer. It's gonna like... rain like yes. Precipitation. Yes. <laughs> but also, in our own little world, there are, yeah, there's boobies. What more do you want? You got boob nothing. Boobies, <laughs> precipitation. So that, I, I mean, want you got DJ that. Barbecue Spandex. There. If you can grab that spaghetti. How long does, um, how long does, um, I'm guessing it's ten minutes, Jamie. <laughs> yes, just like that. Just straight in. Uh, I would go for about, about this, oh, let me, if I shake it, you take it. Hey, All Russell, right. they, they want to know out there so what's it's your... like to be in a threesome with Jamie Oliver. <laughs> you shake it, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't do good on the taking, Jamie. No, no, it's a fairly good handful. So we're going to go in there and, mm -hmm. and we'll just mix it around like that. What would be nice, is anyone in the audience out in the street got a question for Russell, Russell while we're here? 
Let's find one person. They can stick their head through this door and ask a good question. Why is there flowers in this, Jamie? I mean, can okay. people even eat flowers? Vi this is a viola. Oh Try it. Oh, God. I'm eating flowers there, with there'll Jamie be, there'll, there'll be a bit of sweetness <laughs> This is the revolution. Right, so, birds coming here we go. This is an impromptu. <laughs> Let's make an impression. You hold that. Look, look like you're rustic. All right, yeah, just made that. Pick close. You know you can eat flowers. Salad don't have to be boring, you know. This is anything. It's shredded veg. This, 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 this is that for ages. This is a viola. Some movie pasta. Try the viola. Do I want movie pasta? Yeah, we've made that. I, I, like it's that? mainly me, Jamie. It's nice. Okay, you're 21. You're single. We need some placenta for dinner. <laughs> I'm going to have to get you a little bit pregnant now. In nine months, Jamie's going to knock us up a lovely feast yes. made out of your tummy. <laughs> We're eating yes. tummy dinner. Can we remove the cameras first? I'm afraid not, because, <laughs> because it's frankly, food revolution. we've got bills to pay. All the money raised from this making of love well, I'm glad goes I'm to food I'm revolution. Food, food revolution. revolution. You've got to do it for the revolution. OK, you ask Russell a question while I start thinking about booby pasta. Russell, what is your most... <laughs> What is your most favourite food ever? Well, before I was introduced to Booby Pasta <laughs> by Jamie uh, Oliver here and a DJ Barbecue at the Food Revolution, I, I, I was uh, my mate Nicola. She can make a really nice exactly. shepherd's pie with lentils nice. and stuff like that, and she can and make really nice. She can make nice salads. We ain't had one with flowers in it, but next time we're having salad with flowers in it. I'm we're just going to the garden. We're going to go. We're going to go picking. We're just going to pinch oh, wow. that little oh, skin oh, off, off with the, the skin off them. So we're gonna Jamie, pinch. look at mine. See, right. I've told it. you I've just not got the touch. Shh, shh, shh. Shake it. You'll get shake there, it. dude. You'll get oh, there. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a toss-up. In all seriousness, being able to toss is really important <laughs> because you know that when you're tossing, that every single little bit of sauce is lapping and kissing and just looking after that pasta. Then we stick the finger in <laughs> and then we have a taste. A little bit more basil. Can I send you out to yeah, feed some pasta? You, you know how to use tongs? No! <laughs> of course I don't have to do anything. It's just, one thing I'm good at, Jamie, and you know what that you is. Just pinch, you just pinch it. Just pinch. Uh, do you mind going with Annie? Come on, Annie. Uh, you can oh, Annie. 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 Right, can everyone give it up for Russell Brown, please, in the audience? Oh. Give him some love. How was that? That was good, but you said it out before I could actually taste it, dude. Right, there's no eating device. You'll have to have it directly in your mouth. <laughs> is that OK? Good lad. Also, I forgot to put a little parmesan in it, but you know. That's OK. That's OK. Cheers, guys.